Good morning. Today is the second Sunday of July. Half the year has passed. Let us open in prayer for our worship service. Our God and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you. Thank you for your word that reminds us that we are all new creations. Our old selves are gone and the new has come. Thank you that you do not count our sins against us. Thank you for reconciling us to yourself through Christ. Today our prayer is that we will not receive your grace in vain. Remind us today is the day of God's favor and now is the day of salvation. All our help comes from you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'll raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I'll raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I'll raise a hallelujah Hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise, death is defeated. Hallelujah, in the middle of the mystery, I'll raise a hallelujah, fear you lost your hold on me, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is
the louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me. This morning, I want to share with you Matthew chapter 9 verses 35 to 38 Matthew chapter 9 verses 35 to 38 Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness when he saw the crowds he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd Then he said to his disciples, Yes, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Ask therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest field. Please join me as we open in prayer. Lord, there are still so many people who do not know you in a personal way. Many of them are our loved ones, and many times it is very hard for them to see how attractive Christianity really is because we fail to be good witnesses to them. Convict us of our many shortcomings. Many people can be won if we only live consistently godly lives. We pray we will be good witnesses for you. Help us show people that we are Christians and that we follow you, our Christ. Forgive us for the many times we have become bad testimonies of our faith. And remind us this morning that there is such a thing as lifestyle evangelism and people are more interested in our walk more than our talk. Fill us with compassion as we interact with this world and help us point people to you, their Savior. Remind us always of the urgency of salvation. Your word says, Today, now is the acceptable time and now is the day of salvation. Let us announce it to the world, not only with our talk, but more importantly, with our walk. May this urgent message be always in our minds and hearts. We spend hundreds of pesos each month for text messages that will not really matter in eternity. But help us spread the most important message of all, not tomorrow or next week or next month, but today with urgency. Help us be part of this harvest. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Who am I that the highest King would welcome me? I was lost but He brought me in Oh, His love for me Oh, His love for me
There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am I am chosen, not forsaken I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am I am chosen, not forsaken Good morning, brethren in Southern Life. How are you? The Philippines has now a new administration. And some of the many issues our government faces, especially about integrity, are nepotism and political dynasty. Nepotism is defined as the practice among those with power or influence of favoring relatives or friends, especially by giving them jobs. An article I saw about political dynasty states that it is a situation wherein the sequence of powerful leaders is from the same family or line. It is a practice described by Filipinos in which it is normal for politician's son, wife, brother, husband, or other kinsman to run for the same government or other government office. How should we respond to this? Or what should be the possible solution? The Pasig mayor, uh, Vico Soto, said this in one of his interviews. Hindi lang naman isang tao ang magaling eh. Hindi lang isang pamilya ang magaling. Let's find those young leaders. Let's find those next generation leaders who will be better than me. Who will be better than the leaders that we already had here in Pasig? So interview niya ito with GMA7's Howie Severino back in May 28 of 2020. Now, Pastor Lita asked me to speak on the topic of spiritual growth. But what does spiritual growth have to do with raising up new leaders? You see, it's quite easy to see if a person is growing physically. Very obvious yan, nasa panglabas eh. That's why during reunion, sabi nga nila, uh, ang usual na bati ay, oh, tumaba, tumaba ka, or ang tangkad mo na. On the other hand, there are also tests to gauge if a person is maturing emotionally. I think ang tawag dito ay yung emotional quotient. But it is hard to measure a person's spiritual growth. Most of the time, we could only quit, only God really knows. But we, what we have or what we could see are some clues. So how do we know if a person, or a Christian for that matter, is growing spiritually? 
In our church in Bulacan, we use a biblical principle to somehow, somehow assess if a believer is maturing. Is he or she teaching? So for us, this is one of the most concrete barometers to see if he is indeed maturing. Now, where did we base that? In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12, from the New International Version, it says, In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Mas matindi ata yung translation ng New Living Translation. You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's Word or the oracles of God. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. So ito po yung naging basis namin kung bakit it's important for us to teach so that we will see if we are growing or not. Now, you add this principle to the Great Commission where we have to obey the Lord by making disciples and by teaching others, then teaching indeed is a good guide to see if a Christian is growing or not. Now, I understand that this can't be 100% foolproof. I mean, uh, one can also teach without growing spiritually. I get that. But still, this is a good visible gauge and a good aspiration for us if we want to continue growing in the Lord. Hence, I'd like to entitle our study this morning. To aid our own spiritual growth, we should also assist the spiritual growth of others. To aid our own spiritual growth, we should also assist the spiritual growth of others. Manalangin po muna tayo. Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, we are here. We would like to worship you, lift your name up. And at this point, we are going to study your words. Again, we ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom, for clarity. And we pray for focus so that we will learn what you would like us to learn today. We're praying this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, how do we teach? We will base our, our lesson sa mga uh, epistles ni uh, St. Paul. How do we teach? So 1 Thessalonians 1 verses 8 to 10 uh, from the New American Standard Bible. Sabi dito, For the word of the Lord has sounded forth, or comes from the word echo. The word of the Lord has echoed from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith toward God has gone forth so that we have no need to say anything. Sa 2 Timothy 2 naman, very familiar na sa atin tong verse na ito, the things you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So, what do we oh, how how are we going to teach? Uh what we heard, we echo and we entrust to others. Now, siguro, the next question is, what? What are we going to teach? Uh, Paul taught uh, two things. Number one, he taught through a pattern of lessons. He taught through a pattern of lessons. Tignan natin itong mga verses na ito. Again, mga sulat ito ni Apostle Paul. But thanks be to God, sabi sa Romans 6.17, that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. So may pattern of teaching. So 2 Timothy 1 verse 13. What you heard from me, keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Paul loved to talk about Jesus as God's son. Ito yung mga topic na typical na dinidiscuss niya sa kanyang letters. He also talked about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the gospel, salvation slash justification, holiness, the church, prayer, spiritual gifts, persecutions, dealing with sin, Christ's second coming, crowns, and rewards. Uh, some of this we can see from 1 Thessalonians 4 
uh, verses 1 and 2 and 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 to 5. Sabi niya, don't let anyone deceive you in any way for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worship, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. And then sabi niya sa verse 5, Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? Grabe. Sa Acts chapter 17, Luke uh, said that Paul and his team taught God's words in Thessalonica for three Sabbaths. Now, some scholars believe that this could even be several months. Kaya lang, imagine, dun sa ilang buwan na he was in Thessalonica, he was already teaching about the man of lawlessness. When was the last time we heard a preaching about the man of lawlessness? Ganon si Paul, no? Uh, he has a set of teachings. Meron siyang pattern of the lessons that he wanted to teach the believers. <clears throat> So dito, yung details na ng last days, yung kanyang pinag-uusapan. But he did not only taught through a, uh, uh, through a set of lessons or a pattern of lessons. He also taught through a pattern of life, which was his life or Paul's life. Tignan naman natin yung mga verses na ito. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. <clears throat> follow my, that's Paul, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Philippians 3.17 Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have made us or you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. So dito sinasabi niya na um, you follow my example, you made us your models, pero if you see others who are also living like we do, you also follow their examples. Philippians 3.17 Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. Again, he's asking them to follow his example and also those who are following his example. 2 Thessalonians 3.9 We certainly had the right to ask you to feed us, but we wanted to give you an example to follow. And lastly, yung 1 Corinthians 4.16, Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. Wow. Who can say this? No, who can say this with Paul? No, I urge you, brothers, follow my example. You imitate me. These are big words. No? Pero this was what Paul taught uh, his disciples or the churches during his time. Hindi lamang si Paul. He also uh, wanted his disciples to be examples to their disciples. Halimbawa, si Timothy. Sabi niya sa 1 Timothy 4.12, don't, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Si Titus, another young disciple of his, sinabihan din niya, Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity, dignity, and others. Yung Thessalonian believers, sinabihan naman niya sa chapter 1, 6 to 8. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. Kinapi ng mga Thessalonian believers, uh, si Paul at saka si Jesus Christ, for you receive the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and the Kea. So, inimitate nila si Paul, inimitate nila ang Panginoong Jesus, at the same time, they became examples to other believers. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded, sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say, anything. Ito yung verse na binasa rin natin kanina. Na, uh, maganda rin actually na i-combine yun. No? May mga verses din na kinumbine ni Paul yung pattern niya on lessons and pattern niya on his life. 
At tama lang ito. 1 Corinthians 4.17 That's why I have sent Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. He will remind you of how I follow Christ Jesus, that's his life, just as I teach, yan yung lessons niya, in all the churches wherever I go. So saan man siya magpunta, dala niya yung dalawang turo niya na yon, yung lessons and yung kanyang life. Also in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 9, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, yan yung mga lessons, they learned from him, they received from him, they heard from him, or seen in me, I suppose that's his life, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. So combination yan. Ito yung makikita natin na pinapagawa ni Paul sa mga believers or churches during his time. At this uh, at this juncture, no, if we look around, uh, teaching and training others can also be an on-the-job thing. Tingnan natin, ha, halimbawa, si Manong magtataho. Merong nagtitinda ng taho sa amin. Dati, yung tatay yung nagtitinda. Ngayon, yung anak na niya. How did he learn? He passes on. No? Pinapanood siya nung anak niya, sinasamahan siya nung anak niya, until such time na yung anak na yung nagtitinda ng taho. Si Ali na naglalabada sa atin. Uh, saan niya matututunan yung paglalabada? I suppose dun yan din sa nanay niya. Wala namang school of laundry. no? Kung paano tayo maglalaba ng dikamay. No? Kailangan kuskusin yung uh, uh, collar, yung sa armpit, no? banda, paghihiwalay mo yung white sa dekolor. No? Ito ay natututunan lang natin o natututunan nung nagtuturo sa atin on the job. Uh, si Kuyang Barbero, uh, siguro yung mga beautician, meron niya mga vocational schools. Pero yung Barbero sa mga uh, paligid, uh, usually natututo lang yan pagka meron silang pinapanood. They learn by just uh, watching and observing. Si Mamang Truck Driver o Bus Driver, I also heard sa ibang bansa, marahil meron sila ng mga uh, driving school for truck drivers. Pero that's unheard of no, sa Philippines. So, paano sila matututo? By just observing, by just watching. Uh, ganun din yung si ate na nagkitinda sa palengke, no? si Mang, Mang Carpintero, Ortebero, si Jeepney Driver, Tricycle Driver, si Bus Conductor. Uh, itong mga tao na ito, Bagamat uh, we are high on education, no? we are high on uh, going to school and finishing and getting diplomas. Pero itong mga tao na ito, they learn by just watching the examples of others. So what's my point? Sa buhay natin ngayon, in our Christian lives, we can learn and we can also teach ng life to life. Okay? And in fact, I believe this was how Jesus taught his disciples. So I'd like to share with you a simple cycle of developing others. Uh, I really have to be honest with you. Several years back, when I saw this, I copied it. I adapted it, translate ko sa Tagalog, I posted this sa aming church. Kaya alam, when I was uh, trying to uh, search no, kung saan ko nga ba nakuha, parang because I I revised and I added some uh, some principles and that was what others also did sa internet. Ni-revise din nila, nagdagdag ng principles. Uh, pasensya na, hindi ko na alam kung saan ko talaga siya nakuha. No? But this is a uh, compilation of what uh, uh, disciples believe is a good pattern to follow. Paano natin ito gagawin? No? How, how do we do this in our ministries or in our church lives? Ito yung nine steps. Number one, I do you observe. I do, you observe. For example, uh, yung visitation natin, o kaya when we teach Bible studies, when we lead in singing, when we evangelize, we preach, how do we develop others? We do it while somebody else, yung you dyan, is somebody else will observe us. He will be our disciple. He will be our learner. Student natin siya. Step two, I do, you help. We're not asking them to help because uh, we cannot do it, but because we want to develop them. 
we can see this uh, we can see Jesus doing this no to his disciples for example nung feeding of the 5000 ang sabi niya o oh, paano na to ang daming tao where are we going to get food for all these people uh, it's not that he does not know or he did not know what to do but he was uh, welcoming no suggestions welcoming inputs from his disciples so i do you help then it shifts you do siya na yung maggagawa and then tayo na yung mag-aassist at tutulong sa kanya for whatever help he or she might need step 4 you do i observe nago observe ngayon tayo sa ginagawa niya for the purpose of coaching and then number 5 you do and then somebody observes as a learner while tayo ako I coach, and this will be a lifelong process. But now, we are already out of the picture. Halimbawa, sa visitation, nung una, kasama natin siya, we are training him or discipling a person. Pero dito, uh, out of the picture, hindi na tayo kasama dun sa pag-visit, siya na lang ang mag-visit together with another one na iti-train naman niya. Step 6, you do that somebody helps. Okay, and then we have a shift again sa step 7. That somebody does, ito na yung third person, that somebody does, and then you will help. Step 8, that somebody does, and ano nang gagawin mo? You observe. For coaching na naman yan. And then last, that somebody does, and another one observes while you coach. And then the cycle continues. Bakit ko nagustuhan? Yung most of uh, what we can see in the internet is actually hanggang step 4 lang. <clears throat> uh, or step 5, yung nire-release mo siya. What I like with our list is na-accomplish dito yung four generations of discipleship. So, we, it starts with I. Uh, that's me. That's also you. Pwedeng kayo yon. That's we. Uh, how do we disciple? Tayo yung first generation. Uh, you, pag sinabi kong you is that's our trainee yung tinitrain natin, yung dinidisciple natin yung somebody that is now the third generation and then yung another one is the fourth generation so if we do this cycle I, it will ensure na aabot sa four generations yung pagpasa natin kung whatever we want to pass on to others uh, so that they will also grow so, balik ako dun sa question natin. Uh, why will I raise up other leaders? Because realistically, it can help us see if we are growing spiritually. Okay? Makikita natin yun eh. Nag-grow ba talaga ako? Am I growing in my my learning? Sorry, my knowledge of the Lord? Am I growing sa life ko bilang Christian? I can see that if I am also training, discipling, and helping other leaders. At times, it can even force us to grow, knowing that someone is looking up to us. Like a man, no? When he is single, uh, he could do whatever he likes, ano mang bisyo, he can come home anytime. But when he ha but when we will, he will have kids, no, he will be forced, or let's use the word motivated. He will be motivated to live a life so as to be an example to them. Ito yung gusto sana natin mangyari. We want to grow, pero minsan parang uh, wala tayong uh, motivation no? uh, or impetus na, na lalago talaga tayo. But when we help others, that somehow aids, no? that, as, uh, that uh, expedites yung ating growth sa spiritual lives. Balikan po ulit yung verse natin, Hebrews 5.12. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word. All over again. You need milk, not solid food. So the question uh, we, we are being asked is, are we the teachers now? Or are we the basic learners still? Teachers na ba tayo? Nag-train na ba tayo? Nag-disciple na ba tayo? Disciplers na ba tayo? Or tayo pa rin yung dinidisciple? Of course, uh, we should all continually learn, by the way. So, 
Would we really grow spiritually if we help others grow? Lalago ba talaga tayo? Uh, do you have a biblical basis for that, uh, Pastor? Uh, let me close with this. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 16. <clears throat> this is from the New Living Translation. Uh, verse 11. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. So, ano raw ang responsibility ng pastor? It's not to do the ministry by himself, but it is actually to equip others. It's to equip God's people to do God's work. <clears throat> this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son, that we will be mature in the Lord measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Uh, then, verse 14, we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Hindi tayo magpapol sa fake news. Instead, we will speak the truth in love growing in every way more and more like Christ who is the head of the body or who is the head of his body the church verse 16 he makes the whole body fit together perfectly and not as each part does its own special work it helps the other parts grow ulitin ko yon as each part does its own special work yung unique work natin as we do it it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. We need to help each other. If we want to grow, we cannot grow by ourselves. Hindi tayo lang. No? Uh, meron ngang isang proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. Kailangan natin ng tulong ng bawat isa. So, we want to help others uh, para sila mag-grow in their spiritual lives. Pero in so doing, based on this passage, in so doing, di natin napapansin, tayo rin nag-grow, the body of Christ grows, it becomes healthy, it becomes full of love. So for our application, of course, hindi natin ito magagawa apart from God's power. So we need to pray. We need to pray that we will, in reality, continually grow spiritually with God's working. We also should pray that we will find younger believers to disciple and develop so we can continue or even hasten our own growth. Uh, I hope we could also make a list of persons to consider and slowly begin making, a, making an impact in someone else's life. Number four, we adapt or develop a Bible study lesson to share to our disciples. Gagawa tayo or we will ask uh, our leaders ano ba yung pwede natin gamitin so that I could also teach the others. And lastly, evaluate our lives to make it in line with Christ's and be worth emulating by others. Ang hirap no, no? You, when we ask uh, other people to follow our example, to emulate us, uh, ha? Uh, nakakakilabot yata yun, no? Uh, pero yun yung example na sinet ni Paul so that others will also grow. Again, we this is only through God's help and grace. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for our lesson this morning. And because of this, we pray that we will really continually grow. That's your desire for every believer. And we cannot do that apart from your working. Uh, we ask for your help. We also pray that we will find younger believers so that we could disciple them, develop them, uh, so that they will grow and at the same time we will continue or even hasten our own growth. Uh, help us, Lord, to find uh, a group of people or another person in church to consider uh, and slowly begin making an, an impact in his or her life. We also pray that you would give us lessons so that we will be confident uh, in sharing your words and what topics to discuss. And lastly, Lord, help us 
to live our lives uh, patterned after your life uh, so that we will be uh, worth emulate, uh, being emulated by others. We cannot do it by ourselves, Father, but only by your strength, by your grace, by your power. So help us to be good examples to those who look up to us. Uh, bless the brethren of Southern Light, uh, and I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Rami pong salamat. Uh, God bless you all. We now come to the part of worship and giving. To inspire us, allow me to share these two paragraphs about sacrifice and giving. Sacrificial giving is a scriptural principle put in place by God Himself. God practiced it Himself as an example to believers. He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus, so He could bring the whole world to Himself. Sacrificial giving is a scriptural principle put in place by God Himself. Sacrifice means giving to the Lord whatever He requires of our time, our earthly possessions, and our energies to further His work. The Lord commanded, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness from Matthew 6.33. Our willingness to sacrifice is an indication of our devo devotion to God. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you God for, for this opportunity of God to obey you and to offer sacrificially to you. Please Lord God bless our offering of our time, of our energies and of part of your blessings for us God. We thank you God for enabling us to fulfill these duties of God to do the worship and giving. We pray that we please continue God blessing our families, our business, our works, our friends to God, who is also your channel of blessings for us. May please, O Lord God, uh, allow our giving to be able to use to bless others, to reach out others, and to refresh others. And thank you again once more for your love, for your sacrifice, for your life that you have been offered to us, that we will be able to be with you, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.